raison d'être, charades, laissez-faire. These are three words or phrases of French origin that are very much a part of English today. In this video, you'll learn what they mean, how to use them in sentences, and of course, how to pronounce them correctly. Do keep watching, but first, subscribe to The English Nut on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and X. Thank you. This is the favorite term of my viewers, Valkyrie and RSR Taipu, raison d'etre. It means reason for being or reason to exist. Raison is French for reason and être is the verb to be. Note the apostrophe after the D. That's there to indicate that the two words de and être have been placed together and the E of de has been dropped in the process. The French word the means of. Also note the small upside down V above the first E. It's called a circumflex and is used with certain vowels in French to indicate that they should be pronounced with a longer sound. So the phrase is pronounced raison d'être in French, though in English it's simply raison d'être. Your raison d'être is what is most important to you, an essential purpose that gives your life meaning. Music was Ravi Shankar's raison d'être. Virat Kohli's raison d'être is cricket. Looking after the family was my mother's raison d'être. Painting was Anamika's sole raison d'être. When Professor Sen was forced to retire, he lost his raison d'être. Stephen Chu, the American physicist and Nobel laureate, said education in my family was not merely emphasized, it was our raison d'etre. Sigmund Freud, Austrian neurologist and founder of psychoanalysis said, the principal task of civilization, its actual raison d'etre is to defend us against nature. This is the favorite word of my viewer, Heather Ali, YW8OF. Charades. This is the name of a game that I had a lot of fun playing as a child. I would play it with my battalion of cousins, aunts and uncles during our family get-togethers over the holidays. This is how you play the game. You divide the players into two teams. When it's your turn, the opposing team whispers a word or phrase to you. Then it's your job to help your teammates guess what it is. You're not allowed to speak. You split the word or phrase into syllables and express each syllable through silent actions. You can choose a theme for your game, movies for example. Then all the words or phrases that have to be guessed would be titles of movies. Charades originated in France in the 16th century and it became popular in England in the Victorian era as an after-dinner game. These kinds of games are known as parlor games as they were played in the parlor a formal sitting room where you would entertain guests. The classic novel Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte features a game of charades. In fact, the game involving Mr. Rochester and Miss Ingram is used as a narrative device in the story. If you haven't read Jane Eyre, I recommend that you do. Here are a few lines from a poem by Opefaluwa Sarah Adegbite called We Play Charades with Shadows. Here the word charades is used in rather a grim context. This is no game to play, child. This charades with shadows. The rules have outwitted me long ago and my tongue feels too fat for my mouth and too full of fire. The lies of grief spill out from my body unto the floor and I watch them with dead eyes. Lie forlorn among the roses and other things. In its singular form, the word charade means a pretense intended to create an appearance of respectability. It is an act or event that is obviously false, but is represented as true, a blatant deception. We knew that the appraisals were a charade and the boss's nephew would get the coveted post. Talk of unity among the political parties is just a charade. She could no longer keep up the charade and decided to ask her husband for a divorce. Both charade and charades are pronounced charade in French. The French R is pronounced in the throat. 
almost like the English H, Shahad, Raison. This is the favorite word of my viewer, Tapa504, laissez faire. In French, this literally means allow to do. Leave it alone or let it be would be other ways of translating it. Originally a French economic term, it refers to a government policy of not interfering in the marketplace. If, for example, a poor quality product is available, people will soon realize that it is not worth having and stop buying it. But the government won't step in to take the product off the market or pull up the manufacturer for substandard quality. The complete French phrase was laissez faire, laissez passer. The second part of the phrase means let it go. The phrase was coined by 18th century French economists who believed that the government should not interfere with the operation of natural economic laws. Here's a sentence using the term. I want to set up my business in a country with a laissez-faire economy. The previous president had a laissez-faire approach, but the current president believes in regulating the economy. Nowadays, the phrase is applied in a broader sense to any situation where someone takes a hands-off or anything goes approach. One can talk about parents who have a laissez-faire approach to bringing up their children, not giving them curfews or rules to follow and hoping they will take the right decisions by themselves. Nisha's parents had a laissez-faire attitude towards their daughter, allowing her to attend late night parties whenever she wanted. With the laissez-faire approach of the new principal, the student's academic performance actually improved. Here's a quote containing the phrase. It's from the Arkansas Online. Since Musk bought Twitter last year, the billionaire has instituted changes that have angered the social platform's longtime users, especially those who do not care for his laissez-faire approach to content moderation. The French pronunciation of laissez-faire is not too different from the English one. Laissez-faire. Raison d'etre, charades, laissez-faire. These are the words and phrases I dealt with in this video. Let me know what you think in the comments section. And if there are other French terms used in English that you'd like me to cover, do mention them. I'm the English Nut. Bye for now.